So if we start adding up 1 plus negative 2 plus negative 5 plus negative 8, they want to know how far do we need to go to get a sum of negative 259. So we recognize this as an arithmetic sequence. We just keep subtracting 3 every time. And so, well, if we're dealing with the sum of an arithmetic sequence, we've got a formula for that. Uh, it's the average of the first and the last terms times the number of terms you have. So it's like, okay, well, let's plug and chug, right? Like that's, that's a great strategy for math. I know S sub n is negative 259. I know my first term is a 1. And, oh, crap, I don't know my last term. But that's okay, because I have another formula, right? Two formulas are going to get you through this entire arithmetic sequence uh, and series chapter. So remember that you can get any term in an arithmetic sequence by taking your first term and adding your common difference n minus 1 times, right? So I can figure out what that last term is by taking my first term, which is just a 1, and adding my common difference, which is that negative 3, n minus 1 times. And I'm going to clean that up, so that's negative 3n plus 4, and I'm going to substitute that in for this a sub n here. That's negative 3n plus 4, right? And it's okay that it's in terms of n. Uh, I'm going to need to solve for n later, right? Because that's what they want me to do, figure out n, figure out how many terms I need to add up. So this is an equation with one variable, just that n. I can solve this. I am good to go now. Um, so let's see what happens. Uh, I don't like that. Well, let's see. I'm going to clean up the top just a little bit. So that's negative 3n plus 5 over 2 times n. Then I don't particularly like that fraction, that dividing by 2. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of it. A little bit of fraction busting. So negative 5 18 is going to be equal to negative 3n plus 5 times n. Then I'm just going to distribute the n. So negative 5 18 equals negative 3n squared plus 5n. And hey, it's not linear anymore, right? That's to the second power now. And if anything is to the second power, I can solve it. It's a, it's a quadratic, right? By definition, n squared being the biggest power of a polynomial, it's a quadratic. So quadratic formula will be there for us. I want to set everything equal to 0 first. Let's throw everything over to that side. I know that my answer for n is going to be an integer. I know this is going to have clean answers uh, because I know n stands for the number of terms, first term, second term, third term. So I know this will factor. I know it. But this number is kind of gross. So I don't feel like guessing and checking, so my quadratic formula is there for me. Negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So this ends up being uh, the square root of 6241, which is 79. So I've got 5 plus or minus 79 all over 6. So that's 84 over 6 if you add 5 plus 79. And if you do 5 minus 79, you get negative 74 over 6. So you get 14 or negative 37 over 6. And since you can't have a negative 37 over 6 term, right, then we say there are, then it must be the other one, 14 terms. So had you factored this, uh, it would have been n plus 37 and n minus 14 if you had gotten there. Good for you. Uh, and you still would have gotten these as your answer. And you still would have come with the same conclusion, that there are 14 terms. Yay! Just what you've always wanted to know. So it turns out you don't actually have to take this very long to get that. Uh, so on your calculator, you could just keep uh, keep this going to 14 terms, add them all up, and you should get negative 259. Awesome.